In this video, I will show you Lila's shield strength and DPS, using various weapons, artifact stats, and constellations. Is Lila going to replace Diana? Let's find out. Lila is a 4-star off-field cryo applicator slash shielder that has 100% uptime on both her skill and her burst. They both have 12 seconds cooldown and 12 seconds duration, with only 40 energy requirement for the burst. Her skill will deal AoE cryo damage and creates a shield, which the strength is based on her max HP. After that, the shield will accumulate a star every one and a half seconds for up to four stars, and once it reaches four, all of them will be consumed and start shooting at the enemy, one at a time, every half a second. The shield will then continue to accumulate stars again. In addition, if a character under the shield casts a skill, it will accumulate two stars instantly. Her passive increases the shooting star damage by 1.5% of her max HP. And her other passive also increases her shield strength by 6% each time the shield accumulates a star, for up to 24%. Her elemental burst creates a cryo ball similar to Ganyu, and shoots a star to an enemy every one and a half seconds, for a total of 8 shots. The damage of her elemental burst is based on her max HP too. So it's pretty safe to say that her main artifact stats should be full HP for the most shield strength, and with crit substats to increase her damage. And for the artifact set, she will be best with the 4-piece tenacity of the Millilith set, because this artifact set will increase the team's shield strength and attack, with almost full-time coverage. This is because every time her shield shoots a star to an enemy, the 4-piece set will be triggered, and it can last for 5 seconds including the shooting star's duration. Now that we know her best artifact set and main stats, let's check out her weapon DPS chart. In this list, I sorted the weapons by their team shield strength instead of their DPS. And as you can see, the Nilu's signature weapon is the best for that purpose, making Lila able to give 18.1k shield strength with the R1. Although I don't think it's worth pulling because you can just basically use any 3-star weapon and perform almost the same, with 15.2k shield strength for most of the weapons. Now how about equipping Lila with crit DPS artifacts instead of full HP? Let's check out this comparison. As you can see here, with full DPS artifacts, she can dish out 3.45k DPS, but loses out 4k shield strength. It's really up to you if you want to build her as a shielder or as a sub DPS. Now let me show you her constellation comparison. As you can see, Lila at C3 is the sweet spot if you just want a great cryo applicator slash shielder and don't care about her damage. Lila at C4 however, can buff your on-field character's normal and charge attack damage with a huge 5% of Lila's max HP. This can result in an increased DPS of around 3 to 5k DPS for your on-field character. But at C6, she can have a decent 5.2k DPS while maintaining a good amount of shield strength at 16.2k HP using the DPS crit build and a refinement rank 5 Harbinger of Dawn. And I have also included Diana's shield strength of her hold version of the Icy Paw to compare, and surprisingly, Lila at C1 is already better than Diana at C6, shield-wise. If you have Kokomi, I think Lila is the better option than Diana in a freeze team, since Lila can apply cryo with 100% uptime, and freeze team doesn't need EM from Diana anyway. This way, you can assign Diana for other teams that benefit her EM. For comparison, I have also included Yinfei, Toma, and Zhongli's shield strength. I think that's it guys and let me know in the comments what you think about Lila. I wish she will be in Nahida's banner, so I can go all out in that banner. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more DPS calculation videos like this.